Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 86 to 90. So first I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 86, 87, 88, 89, and 90. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 86, it says penicillin acts to inhibit the production of peptidoglycan. As a result, penicillin acts as an antibacterial by doing what? So we know that penicillin is inhibiting peptidoglycan. And if you know your biology related to bacteria, you know that this is a molecule that's used to build up bacterial cell walls. It's pretty important for the structure of their cell walls. If they don't have this anymore, their cell wall is compromised. There are holes in the cell wall and it can't really perform the function that it normally does. And its normal function would be to separate the inside contents of the bacteria from the surrounding environment. Now, if that can't happen, we know that there are different concentrations of whatever solutes on the inside of the bacteria compared to the outside. And normally water is trying to get in and balance this concentration through osmosis. So water is gonna to try to come into the cell. The cell wall normally tries to block this, but now that it can't maintain its function because of missing peptidoglycan, water is going to come in and therefore the cell is going to burst. So option A, osmotic lysis, this one makes sense. This is one way in which penicillin can kill bacteria. Inhibition of translation, you know, peptidoglycan is related to cell walls. That's not really related to ribosomes and translating RNA. So it's not really relevant for that function. Disrupting membrane transport, it is a part of the membrane, peptidoglycan, but it's more so the structure of the cell wall. And it's not like it's related to any proteins that are related to membrane transport. So maybe if there are some holes in the cell wall, then we have things going in and out, but water would be rushing in and out more so than any specific solutes or molecules that are coming in and out. And so it's not, really directly related to membrane transport either. And just like with option B, it's not related to replication or translation. It's not related to these processes. Peptidoglycan is related to the structure of the cell wall. So A would be our correct answer. In question 87, it says male turkeys possess wattles, which are large fleshy tissue around the neck and head area. Large wattles serve as a sign of high testosterone and are often indicative of reproductive ability. Wattles are an example of what? So turkeys possess wattles. They are a sign of high testosterone and indicate reproductive ability. What are they an example of? So if we're talking about reproductive ability, it would be something which is a sex characteristic. So it's going to be either A or B, but then we need to know the difference between a primary type and a secondary type. So a primary type is something which is directly and then anatomically actually related to reproduction. For example, you know, genitalia. Those are sex characteristic and they're actually related to the process of reproduction. So there would be a primary sex characteristic. That's not what wattles are, so it's not this one, but secondary sex characteristics are also related to reproduction and fertility, things like that but they're not directly associated with the process of reproduction. So examples of this could be feathers and birds that are very brightly co colored, such as peacocks. It could be vocal cords in males that have like songs to attract female members of their species. These are sex characteristics. They, you know, show things like high testosterone and the reproductive ability of this organism, but they're not directly involved in the actual process of sex. So, that's what a secondary sex characteristic is, and that matches with wattles. Option C is talking about vestigial structures, and those are structures that are kind of left behind in a species due to evolution. A, an ancestor used to have this structure, and it was useful for that ancestor, but it still remained in the current species, even though in its environment and the way it lives its life, it doesn't really play a, a role. For example, flightless birds, like penguins and ostriches, they have wings because their ancestors did, but they don't use these wings in their environment. And 
based on the type of species they have now become they don't fly or they can't fly but they still have these wings and therefore they're useless and they're vestigial structures but that is not related to what we're talking about here because wattles are something that turkeys use it's not something that was just left behind because of evolution no it's still something they use as a species nowadays so it's not a vestigial structure and constitutive structures that's not really a thing the word constitutive usually we find it in genetics when we're talking about a gene that's always turned on it's constitutively active but it's not really something that's related to structure so we can rule that option out therefore our correct answer is b in question 88, it says one would expect to find involuntary non-striated muscle in blank. So involuntary non-striated muscle. So m most muscle is striated, that's voluntary. So like um, skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, those are striated. So they have those lines along them. But the type of muscle that is non-striated would be smooth muscle so we're looking for an option of smooth muscle option a is muscles of the quadriceps so no the quads are something that we do voluntarily control and it's skeletal muscle so not this one cardiac tissue we don't voluntarily control it but cardiac tissue is a specialized type of muscle that is striated when you learn about cardiac tissue in the heart you should have learned that it is a striated type so it's involuntary, but it's not non-striated. The tongue, similar thing. It is also a muscle which is voluntary and that we control. But D, the D intestine, yes. This is something which is involuntary. It's smooth muscle. It's not the type of muscle that we control. So it's involuntary and it's non-striated because it's smooth muscle. So D is correct. In question 89, it says Sertoli cells are responsible for which of the following? So we're talking about Sertoli cells and what they're responsible for. So what is their function? Option A is saying for supporting, for being support for developing sperm cells. Yes, this is a function which they have. So sperm cells usually begin to develop and go through their different stages near Sertoli cells. And the Sertoli cells are giving them nutrients to help them grow and develop. Option B is saying they support the nephron similar to a myelin sheath. No, that's incorrect because Sertoli cells are not related to the nephron or the nervous system. That might be something more like Schwann cells. So if you don't really know what Sertoli cells are in which system they belong to, you might think that this is the correct answer, but they're not related to the nervous system. They're related to the male reproductive system. Option C is saying protecting the egg from infectious agent, agents. That's incorrect because the egg, that is something that's involved in the female reproductive system. So it's not related to this question. And finally, option D is saying consuming polar bodies produced during oogenesis. Same thing. If you see this word, oogenesis or egg, they're talking about the female reproductive system. And therefore, you can rule that answer out. So here's just a diagram of Sertoli cells. So what's being shown here is in the middle, the pink thing, that's label number seven. Those are two Sertoli cells and they're just connected to each other and around them and attached to them are sperm cells which are going through their different stages of development. So as you increase here, as you go from one to six, they're getting increasingly developed and then they become spermatids. So A is our correct answer here, and then B, C, and D are talking about different systems. They're not even related to the male reproductive system. In question 90, it says a water-soluble protein is transferred into a beaker containing hexane. Which of the following will decrease the most for the protein given its new environment? We're talking about a water-soluble protein. Now it's in a beaker containing hexane, so it was transferred to hexane, what will decrease the most? Okay, so multiple things may decrease. We want to know what decreases the most, and we're looking for something that decreases, not increases. So if we're talking about a water-soluble protein, 
that means that the majority of its its amino acids are hydrophilic so they like to bond with polar things they like to dissolve, dissolve in polar solvents now they were just placed in a non-polar solvent and what happens when you put something that's polar and non-polar together is you get the hydrophobic effect which means that you have a pretty ordered solvation layer around whatever was dissolved so for example if we had this is kind of just like one tail or one part of the water soluble protein it's mainly hydrophilic now we have an ordered layer of the nonpolar molecules this is so the fewest amount of molecules which really have to interact with this species because these are the species being the hydrophilic protein they are going to form a layer and then other nonpolar molecules don't really have to interact with this hydrophilic thing because those are unfavored interactions so this would be non-polar versus if we were in a polar environment then you have these lines are representing hydrogen bonds you have hydrogen bonds to things some are very close to the hydrophilic protein some can be further out and then they're also hydrogen bonding to each other so we have all these hydrogen bonds going on and the key thing is that these water molecules are moving around they're moving everywhere whereas the ones for the nonpolar, the solvent molecules were not moving around. So what happens in the polar environment is there are these favorable interactions. You have the hydrogen bonds being able to form. So in the polar solvent, this protein is making and breaking hydrogen bonds with the solvent molecules all the time. And those solvent molecules are free to move. So there's a lot of movement going on. Whereas in a nonpolar solvent, everything's very ordered. You have this solvation layer tightly around the protein, but then it's not moving anywhere. So you have a lot more order when it's nonpolar and then more disorder or randomness when it's polar. And order and disorder, they relate to entropy. So the thing that decreased the most is going to be option C. It decreased because we have a lot more order. And when you have more order, you have less entropy. So entropy decreased. The temperature, there's no real reason for this to decrease, the temperature of the protein. If we just keep it at the same you know, temperature in the room, then the solvent should be at the same temperature. So that's not something which really changed. Enthalpy, it might have decreased as well because you had some more favorable interactions before. Now you have less favorable interactions. So enthalpy could have decreased as well, but we're talking about what decreased the most, and that would definitely be entropy. And finally, molecular weight is not going to change. The protein is still the protein. It didn't get cleaved or anything. Since it's the same protein and it's made up of the same parts, the same amino acids, its molecular weight is going to be the same. So our best answer, what decreased the most, is entropy. And then we can rule out the other answers. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this going through all the different answers and explaining why each one is correct or incorrect. And other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with the videos that we post here. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys.